Hi everyone, today we'll be talking about HELP syndrome. Now, what is this HELP syndrome? HELP syndrome is a complication that occurs in pregnant females and uh, it is predominantly, it's kind of, HELP is actually a short form or an abbreviation or an acronym which stands where H stands for hemolysis, EL stands for elevated liver enzymes and LP stands for low platelets. The primary, uh, you can say the primary basis of this syndrome is low platelets which is considered to be the most significant finding and then there, the liver enzymes are elevated and there occurs hemolysis. It's a potentially fatal condition and when it is seen, it is seen in uh, third trimester primarily but it can also happen in early se uh, in late second trimester and it can also occur in early postpartum within 48 hours of uh, delivery or so then it can occur there also it's a potentially fatal condition a patient can land into and uh, it can cause patient's death and it is basically found in patients with severe preeclampsia so preeclampsia patients you may be finding such complication it is not common so it is nothing to be scared about it is not common but yes no rare things also present many times so you should know about them and the incidence is 0.5 to 1 percent of all pregnancies now uh, what is the basic pathophysiology although it is not very clear till now that what is the basic pathophysiology but what it is presumed is that due to preeclampsia there is a arterial arteriolar vasospasm and this leads to damage of the endothelium and when the endothelial damage occurs there is dep deposition of the fibrin in the vessel lumen which leads to platelet deposition then there is microangiopathic hemolytic anemia this leads to hepatocyte destruction due to a uh, small microemboli forming in the hepatic arteries and then there is distension of liver due to impeded blood flow so it affects the liver primarily and in later cases because now there has been a blockage in the liver this may lead to the rupture of the parenchyma and there may be subcapsular hematomas or there may be which may lead to further hypovolemic shock so it may turn out to be a serious condition now what are the clinical symptoms that uh, may give us a clue that this could be help syndrome although it may mimic many other things but still these are the symptoms which can help us now obviously generalized malaise is not going to help you much but that is occurring in around 90 percent cases epigastric pain 65 percent cases nausea and vomiting 30 percent cases headache in 31 percent cases then there may be tenderness in the right hypochondrium no? the liver area may be tender and obviously preeclampsia patients so there may be hypertension hypertension and protein urea which may be there plus minus or maybe even mild now what is important here is that whenever you are dealing with a patient with preeclampsia or a high uh, hypertension patient then you should be careful in these patients especially if they present with epigastric or right hypochondrial pain you should be very careful in such cases and get the scan done especially the upper abdomen scan also so that you know what is uh, the issue I'll tell you what happens in ultrasound, what we see in what, what is its relation to ultrasound. Now, what happens, I told you that in the beginning when we were talking about pathophysiology that there occurs subcapsular hematomas and intraparenchymal hematomas. So that is what ultrasound may help you to see, one thing. And second thing the ultrasound may help you is that it will exclude any condition like cholecystitis. So it ex excludes the biliary tract disease and it also helps you to see the hematoma so you may find intracapsular uh, sorry intraparenchymal hematomas or cap, uh, hematomas beneath the capsule of the liver like here you can see you know this area shows a different texture compared to rest of the liver so there is a subcapsular hematoma in this picture you can see there are intraparenchymal bleeds you, know, you can see this patchy white areas irregular patchy white areas obviously you should keep the DDs in mind of hemangiomas uh, but hemangiomas usually are not so irregular they are more regular they are more rounded and then they are as asymptomatic but yes this is one thing that you may see in case of health syndrome you may find that the liver uh, may be enlarged you may find intraparenchymal and subcapsular hematomas and there may be tenderness on the liver area so there can be there, there is kind of tender hepatomegaly you may Find. In addition, you may find there is free fluid because of the hematomas because sometimes the capsule may rupture and that may lead to free fluid in the peritoneal cavity also.
What are the laboratory findings? The platelet count usually would be less than 100 into 10 to the power 9 per liter, which is considered to be the most reliable sign. The serum AST levels more than 70 IU per liters, serum LDH more than 600 IU per liters, and total bilirubin more than 1.2 milligram per deciliter. Right. Then the severity and lab abnormalities do not correlate. It may be possible that the lab abnormalities are at the lower side, but still the condition may be severe. So now, what are the warning features? Now, this is more important rather than knowing about health. That is why I've kept it as a last slide that this is more important that what are the warning features for help in preeclampsia patients means whenever a preeclampsia patients, you are dealing with a preeclampsia patient, you should be cautious about these points and you should, when you are doing a scan in such patients, you should see for these uh, signs carefully. Clinically acute abdominal pain, which may be occurring in the right hypochondrium or the epigastrium. Now that will be the first clue. And on ultrasound, since we are dealing with sonography, uh, what are the clues that you may get on ultrasound in a patient uh, who is having preeclampsia that this patient may go into HELP syndrome? What are the warning signs? The warning signs are tender hepatomegaly, enlarged liver, which is more than 16 centimeter in size, in superior inferior dimension when you measure in the mid clavicular line, right? We all know the liver size can vary normally also between 15 to 20 centimeters, but you have to be careful in these patients if the size is going beyond more than 16 centimeters. Usually the liver size in the superior inferior dimension does not go beyond 15 centimeter in most patients in a routine case. Then the gallbladder wall may look thick. The thickening of the gallbladder wall may be there. Then there may be periportal increased ecogenicity, what we call as starry liver, bright portal triads. Now the periportal cuffing is there. So bright portal triads may be there, areas may be there, and then free fluid may be there. All these are you are, uh, they should warn you or there should be the alarming signs. They should be uh, cautioning you that something wrong is going to happen. But keep this part also in mind that HELP syndrome is rare. These findings which I am telling you are uh, actually very non-specific. So they have to be correlated with the lab findings and they have to be correlated with the clinical symptoms. No, Otherwise, starry liver we see in acute hepatitis also. Starry liver we see in tuberculosis also. Similarly, thick gallbladder wall we may see in many conditions. No, We may see in um, uh, dengue fever. We may see in uh, acute hepatitis. We may see in enteric fever also. Sometimes we may see in uh, CHF also, cirrhosis also. So there are many conditions. So the points that I am telling you are basically just non-specific but when correlated with the patient's pregnant state when correlated with her preeclampsia when correlated with her uh, lab findings they may give you a clue that yes this could be going into health syndrome so i hope this helps you and you keep this in mind see uh, for a gynecologist knowing a little bit of abdominal sonography also becomes useful at times so that you can just put up your probe up and see what is going on there fine so uh, but still if you even if you know about something then you will have it in mind if you don't know about a thing then obviously you will think what is there nothing i just see non-specific features in the liver but they may turn out to be important right? so i hope this helps you thank you